Hi, um, my name is Meg Modley. I work with the Lake Champlain Basin Program. Um, I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Management Coordinator, and we are here today at the Mallets Bay Boat Launch. It's a Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department public access site to Lake Champlain. It's a very busy launch site. As you can see, there are four lanes that launch and retrieve here. And we are here uh, to welcome the Senator for his press conference, but also to highlight the importance of the Clean Drain Dry Program for checking boats for aquatic invasive species. We have had a boat launch steward program on Lake Champlain for 17 years on the Vermont side. Um, and we have stewards up on Missisquoi Bay um, in Quebec, as well as stewards supported through New York State Department of Environmental Conservation on the New York side of the lake. And all of our stewards are wearing the same uniforms, they're delivering the same messages, and they're offering courtesy boat inspections. What they're doing is really looking to see if watercraft are traveling from other bodies of water where there may be aquatic invasive species that we don't have present in Lake Champlain. Um, so what they do is they do a head to toe inspection. They look at the hull, the engine, they make sure the bilge water's drained, that the live well doesn't have anything in it. They check the anchor line and they offer um, removal of species and in some cases decontamination of the watercraft. So if we do find something like zebra mussels or quagga mussels on a watercraft, we'll refer them to our decontamination site, which is up the hill. It has high pressure hot water that can help remove and kill these organisms. Um, and it's just as important to check watercraft coming into Lake Champlain as it is to check watercraft exiting Lake Champlain. We have 51 known non-native and invasive species in Lake Champlain. About a dozen of those have been measured to cause some kind of harm. Those are species that you might be familiar with, like Eurasian water milfoil, zebra mussels, alewife, sea lamprey. Um, but the watercraft exiting Lake Champlain are often going to uninvaded water bodies, and we have a lot to protect in our region. 80% of the water bodies in Vermont are free of aquatic invasive species, and 75% of the lakes in the Adirondack Park are free of aquatic invasive species. So um, I'm going to hand the microphone microphone over to Emma Brzezinski, who is a first year steward here. She's worked at various launches and she can share some of her experiences. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emma and as Meg said, this is my first year as a boat launch steward. Um, and I've worked several different launches around Lake Champlain, including Mallets Bay right here, um, Colchester Point, Perkins Pier in Burlington, um, as well as uh, Converse Bay in Charlotte. Um, and so the boat launches have had, like they vary in traffic levels. Uh, Perkins Pier, I've talked to a lot of people um, on foot uh, and just talking to them, talking to a lot of kids are uh, interested in invasive species as well. Uh, so giving out brochures and pamphlets, um, that's very common at Perkins Pier and places like Converse and here is a lot of boat traffic. So we get a lot of uh, motor boats, jet skis, kayaks um, and so, yeah, we talk to them uh, and ask them what what they do to prevent the spread of invasive species. Um, and then we, you know, if there's anything that they're wondering about invasive species and what they can do, we do a lot of education and informing as well. So um, it's really great. Um, I'm an environmental science major at the University of Vermont, so the environment has always been important to me. Uh, and so I myself love learning more about invasive species and I love talking to other people um, as well. So yeah. yeah. I would just say that um, most people who come and go from Lake Champlain know the program and really appreciate the program and understand that we're trying to protect the resource that they love, no matter if they like to go you know, out on uh, an inner tube with their family or go out for a sunset cruise or go fishing in the lake. Um, we try and make that connection with the user um, so that they understand the importance of the program. And we're really trying to um, sh share best management practices with them so that they become more familiar with cleaning, draining, and drying their watercraft because we can't be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so we really appreciate um, the, your patience and the courtesy that you provide to our boat launch stewards on the launch and the understanding that we're really here just trying to protect the lake that we all love. All right. Uh, thank you for coming, everybody. My name is Eric Howe. I'm the director of the Lake Champlain Basin Program and the Champlain Valley National Heritage Partnership. The Lake Champlain Basin Program works with the Lake Champlain Steering Committee to coordinate management of the Lake Champlain watershed. 
We use, uh, we are supported with EPA funding, uh, Great Lakes Fishery Commission funding, and National Park Service funding to help achieve our goals for the lake and the heritage area. Uh, we, our, our funds are used to support research priorities and boots on the ground implementation projects to help address water quality concerns, invasive species concerns, fisheries concerns, and also to support outreach programming to help uh, our people and stakeholders of the watershed uh, understand what they can do to make a difference here in Lake Champlain Basin. Um, I am uh, very honored today to introduce uh, Senator Peter Welch to uh, the podium to share a few remarks um, about the Basin Program. Um, th uh, thank you very much, Eric. Thank you, uh, everyone, for being here on such an incredible day. And I wish anybody who's watching could join us because we're going out on beautiful Lake Champlain <laughs> in just a couple of minutes. You know, I just want to acknowledge uh, how near and dear Lake Champlain is uh, to Vermonters and to our neighbors uh, on the New York side uh, and our neighbors in Quebec. Uh, and Patrick Leahy, of course, has been the champion of Lake Champlain cleanup. Uh, he did that uh, during his decades in the Senate. And one of his pioneering successes uh, was the Lake uh, Champlain uh, Basin Program. And we're here uh, to introduce the, the continuation of that Lake Champlain uh, Basin Program. And it would allow for authorization of $55 million to continue uh, the work of research of cleanup uh, and of doing everything we can uh, to protect and improve Lake Champlain. It's a generational challenge. There are many stresses on the lake, uh, among them climate change and how that affects temperature. Uh, all the storms we've been having that cause excessive runoff. Uh, so the challenges are rising even as our commitment remains steady. And uh, this uh, legislation that we're introducing to continue the program and to increase the funding, uh, sponsored by Senator Sanders uh, and Congresswoman Ballant, is a continuation of the commitment that Vermont has had and Senator Leahy has led during his years on our behalf uh, to protect and clean up Lake Champlain. Uh, I'm, we're delighted that Senator Schumer uh, and Senator Gillibrand, our, na our neighboring uh, colleagues in New York, have uh, joined us in the introduction of this legislation. Uh, you know, sometimes people will ask me, uh, why do we spend money on this? We spend money on this because it's our heritage. Uh, this lake was clean. Uh, this lake has a lot of use. This lake is an, it's an, it's a, a miracle of nature. Uh, and it's one of the wonders of the world, as far as we're concerned. Uh, Senator Leahy called it a great lake. Uh, some of our colleagues uh, in the Midwest disagreed. But you know what? We think Senator Leahy's right. This is a really, really great lake. So that means uh, all of us who get to benefit by living uh, in proximity to this lake so that we can use it, so that we can see it, uh, so that we can fish on it, that means all of us have a responsibility to do our part to make certain that those who come after us find a lake that's cleaner and better and stronger than the lake we have even today. And that requires the persistent effort of scientists, of conservationists, of environmentalists, of everyday citizens who have the opportunity to use this precious resource. So I am delighted that today uh, we're announcing uh, Senator Sanders and Congresswoman uh, Ballant and I, our sponsorship of the continuation with increased authorization in funding so that the work that Senator Leahy did on our behalf to protect Lake Champlain, improve it, continues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Welch. Uh, I would next like to introduce uh, Secretary Julie Moore from the Agency of Natural Resources. Good morning, everyone. Water plays an integral role in Vermont's ecology and Vermont's economy, and the Lake Champlain Basin Program is a core partner in our efforts to be clean water stewards. Clean water is essential, and it's also fragile, and we need not look further than the series of devastating flood events Vermont has experienced over the past 12 months to be confronted with this vulnerability. 
I'm sure like me, uh, many of you have watched billions of gallons of turbid water flow past in our local streams and rivers carrying literally tons of sediment and nutrients to Lake Champlain. The stark visual has brought immediate concerns and questions from reporters and individual Vermonters alike asking, what does this mean for our Great Lake? Lake Champlain is a complex ecosystem, meaning that it can be challenging to draw a straight line from any single event, such as the storms earlier this month, and a particular outcome. For example, the more than three dozen observations of possible cyanobacteria blooms reported to the agency last week. But given the increasing frequency and severity of climate-related events, it is essential that we work to improve our understanding of these dynamics to maximize the benefits of our management efforts. And this is where the Basin Program plays such a critical role. In coordinating efforts between New York, Quebec, and Vermont to track water quality concerns, in funding applied research to help us better understand and steward Lake Champlain, um, dear me, sorry, <laughs> helping us better understand Lake Champlain. In addition to being an important partner in ANR's work to advance clean water, thriving communities, and healthy ecosystems within the Champlain Basin, the Lake Champlain Basin Program also provides support to a growing number of organizations that implement clean water projects, whether they're clean water practices on the ground or interactive projects designed to educate the next generation of Basin residents through arts, culture, and science. The work of the Basin Program shows in many ways. I'm grateful to Senator Welch and the rest of our congressional delegation for championing the LCBP Reauthorization Act. This bill will support the Basin Program and thereby our shared work, including clarifying the relationship between the Basin Program and its partners and this authorization of greater annual funding. This is a critical time for so many of Vermont's natural resources, including Lake Champlain, and I look forward to the continued and expanded partnership with the Lake Champlain Basin Program that the Reauthorization Act will support. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Moore. I now would like to welcome Karen McGuire, the EPA Region 1 Deputy Administrator, to the podium. Good morning. Wow, what an incredible day to celebrate such an amazing resource. Um, Senator Welsh, thank you so much for the invitation for um, us to join today from EPA. And Secretary Moore, um, thank you for your partnership. Um, Again, I'm Karen McGuire. I'm the Deputy Regional Administrator in EPA Region 1 or EPA New England. Um, and we work closely with our colleagues from Region 2 office in New York, um, as well as in partnership with um, states of Vermont and New York and Quebec uh, to uh, work on uh, protection of the lake. You know, here we believe that um, environmental protection and economic benefit go hand in hand. And what a resource this is that supports diverse habitats, uh, connects residents and visitors with an unbelievable beauty up here, and of course generates um, many dollars in tourism revenue. Um, for the last several decades, as the Senator Welsh was describing, uh, with the Basin Program, EPA uh, has been able to work with all our partners and to uh, issue grant funding uh, for lake restoration. You know, like many water bodies across the country, it certainly faces some challenges. The senator was speaking about climate change and obviously the challenge of too many nutrients, phosphorus, which is leading to many of the algal blooms um, that we see here. Um, thanks to the support, just the unwavering support of the um, Vermont and New York delegations, um, again, we've able to dedicate resources to reducing pollution, educating the public, and addressing these challenges facing the lake. Um, so thank you again for uh, inviting me today to uh, recognize uh, this continued work and progress, and uh, let's, let's keep at it. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Administrator McGuire. I'd now like to welcome and invite Lori Fisher, who is the Executive Dir Director of the Lake Champlain Committee. Lori? Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here today. I'm delighted to be here today, but, uh, in part because I've been working on Lake Champlain issues long enough to have been around 
prior to the Lake Champlain Basin Program. In fact, the Lake Champlain Committee was one of many collective voices lobbying to bring the Lake Champlain Basin Program into being. Prior to that, we really didn't know which direction this lake was moving in and how fast. And that uh, the Basin Program, the Special Designation Act that Senator Leahy led on in um, collaboration with the congressional delegation, which Senator Welch has been a champion for uh, since uh, his during his long career uh, and previously as a congressman, but now as a senator, we're really grateful for that collaborative approach to connect New York, Vermont, and Quebec efforts to protect protecting and restoring this vital resource, which is so fundamental to our quality of life, to our economic and public health. It's our drinking water source. It's this incredible recreational playground. Uh, but it's also this wonderful water body that does so much to sustain and restore our spirits. And in these challenging times, whether we're facing things like the impacts of climate change, which we are seeing on a regular basis and the historic flooding that happened yet again um, on, you know, in the anniversary of the 2023 flooding, saying the same things happen. Uh, we also need these incredible natural resources to restore, restore our spirits. They also are a reflection of what we value as a society. And the Reauthorization Act enables us to come together and to commit to not only protecting the incredible resource values that we have, but also to restore those areas where we're seeing degradation, to think about how we respond to the increasing challenges of our day with climate change, build greater resiliency. It also enables us to invite the large community of Basin residents and visitors here into that project. So I'm really delighted that Senator Welch will be spending some time with the boat stewards and also with our cyanobacteria monitoring uh, monitors who through funding through the Lake Champlain Basin Program, we've been able to grow that program over time to what we're told is the most comprehensive cyanobacteria monitoring program in North America through a public-private partnership with state agencies, with municipal um, representatives, and with community science volunteers. It allows people to engage and get involved in water protection on issues they deeply care of, care about, and that's what also fosters this ongoing stewardship ethic. Because where are those volunteers of tomorrow, the stewards of tomorrow, going to come from if they don't have access to this water body and really get involved? So I'm delighted to be here. Just want to recognize some of our volunteers who are out here and um, really grateful for all these efforts and to continue this ongoing collaborative work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. I'd now like to invite uh, Ethan Hinch from Senator Sanders' office. Good morning. <clears throat> My name's Ethan. I'm an outreach representative for Senator Bernie Sanders. I know the senator would have liked to be here today in person, but I thank you for the opportunity to offer a few remarks on his behalf. Lake Champlain is one of Vermont's most treasured resources. We must do everything we can to protect it. For the past 30 years, the Patrick Leahy Lake Champlain Basin Program has preserved and enhanced natural and cultural resources that are a huge part of what makes the Champlain Valley such an important part of the Vermont community. The program does such important work to reduce pollution in the lake, restore habitats, prevent the spread of harmful invasive species, educate residents and visitors, and involve local communities in its ecosystem protection and restoration efforts. As a member of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee, Senator Sanders has been proud to support the program's efforts to protect and improve water quality and ecosystem health in the Lake Champlain Basin through the annual appropriations process and the Biennial Water Resources Development Act. Bernie is also proud to support the Lake Champlain Basin Program Reauthorization Act, which will give the program the tools it needs to continue effectively serving the Lake Champlain community and extend the program's federal authorization another 10 years. Bernie looks forward to seeing the good work the program will do for current and future generations. Thank you.
Thank you, Ethan. And I'd also like to invite David Schur, Schur from uh, Congresswoman Becca Ballant's office. David. Good morning. Uh, the Congresswoman is sorry that she can't be here personally. The House is going to be in session in a few hours and she wasn't able to make the scheduling work, but she did want to extend her gratitude, first of all, to Senator Welch for his leadership on this issue for many years, and in particular this year. I can say, uh, I can announce here today that although the Congresswoman has been on board with this uh, for since the idea was introduced, she uh, is excited to be able to say that tomorrow she will officially be introducing the House Companion Bill in the U.S. House. So we'll have bills on both sides of the Capitol, uh, hopefully ready to move as soon as we can. I think it's also important to acknowledge Senator Leahy's extraordinary leadership on this. It is very appropriately now named for Senator Leahy, as the as Senator Welch mentioned. Uh, Senator Leahy, I, I, I recall when he ran into a little bit of trouble for trying to call Lake Champlain the sixth Great Lake, um, but I believe he was right. I think all of us here believe that he was right in that, even though it didn't quite make it into federal statute. I think, as many have said before, this is such an extraordinary resource. It's such a critical resource, um, both for e ecologically, environmentally, but also for the people who live nearby this lake. Uh, as one of the people who lives near this lake, I'm grateful for it uh, every day. I, I got engaged on the shores of Lake Champlain. Uh, it's incredibly important to so many of us who live here. And the uh, important thing to remember when we talk about bills like this, when we talk about the importance of spending resources on this, is that these places, unfortunately, cannot take care of themselves. They require a commitment, they require resources, they require the people who live near them to care and to put the effort and resources into them to preserve them and maintain them. Uh, as we've all been dealing with recently, the climate change is real, uh, it can be very severe, and it does require our effort and um, attention to make sure that we can preserve these important places and resources. So. Thanks again to Senator Welch and to Senator Leahy. Congresswoman Ballin is honored to be a part of this effort and um, we'll be introducing in the House tomorrow. Well, it builds on what we're doing, but it also uh, is trying to reorganize to make uh, the, uh, the the basin more flexible and also to be able to raise private funds to assist in the work. So, you know, there's always two challenges. One is getting resources, and the second is delivering them efficiently and effectively. So there is some reorganization here that uh, takes into account lessons learned over the course uh, of the work that's been done so far. So to what degree, and maybe this Yeah. Uh, this organization play in terms of like policy for input. Well, I, I'll let Eric answer this, but you know what? Science matters. Information matters. Data matters. And those are tools that allow uh, the policy, the implementers, uh, to focus resources in the most effective way. But I'll turn it over. Eric, go ahead. Thank you, Senator. So the Lake Champlain Basin Program. Um, uses science to help inform policy management decisions here in the Lake Champlain Basin. We don't lobby, we don't advocate, but we do uh, support research and uh, help uh, use our resources to answer questions from those who do drive policy here in the Lake Champlain Basin. I can just note, um, the Lake Champlain Committee is a bi-state nonprofit, and we do lobby, and we do do advocacy work, and so, um, but we're also science-based, and um, the Basin Program has led to research and monitoring, to consistent research and monitoring, critical data that we can then use to advance policy initiatives. So, for instance, 
uh, legislation that passed after the basin program came into being, but was informed by policy that they, um, uh, by research and monitoring that they did, was advancing measures such as um, bans on phosphate fertilizer used in both New York and Vermont. So um, you're not allowed to use phosphorus-based fertilizer on your lawn um, unless a soil test tells you it's required. Uh, so some of those things, the fact that, um, you know, we have our monitoring program is primarily funded through the Lake Champlain Basin program. We would not have been able to sustain that effort without that ongoing funding. So now we're in our 23rd year. We regularly use the results of that to drive uh, policy uh, initiatives. So we are working on ag regulations and you know advancements in terms of water quality protection and using that science and monitoring and it's a very very fundamental part of getting to implementation and really getting you need to be able to kind of prove that same thing we're going to be um, um, hopefully helping support legislation in Vermont um, of a chloride bill it's directly tied to information that came out, was gathered through funding through for the Lake Champlain Basin program about increased chloride levels and concerns with that. They were doing a, a secchi disc, so measuring water clarity. So they the basically drop a standard disc down to the water with its white and black in coloration, and you measure how deep you can still visually see it from the surface. So it gives you an idea of water quality. This is a, a grab. They're going to go down and grab a water sample at a given depth. So they're able to lower that down and then grab, close it, and pull that water up. So the uh, messenger he sent down is going to trip the mechanism to basically close the tube and then that will bring up water from that depth. How often do they do this? Uh, the long term monitoring is it's every week, every two weeks they're doing stations. So there's, I forget how many stations, 40 something on the lake that they'll go through and do samples. And they know they're in the right place because that buoy over there? That's their, uh, that's a real-time monitoring. So that's actually taking things like water temperature and some other measurements. And that's uploading data onto the website, the Lake Champlain Basin Program website. Um, so that's a, a kind of a monitoring station that's doing real-time. I think uh, you're talking about a half hour. It's about a half hour delay. Something like that. Yeah, half hour delay to basically having that data on the web. Do take the sample here so that they can correlate with the data from that? Uh, they have a long-term monitoring station here. 
if this is where we are. I don't know exactly, but um, the that that station's like, and they'll repeat sample that station. Okay. So. Um, but is the station a piece of equipment, or is it just? A it's spot? a spot, a GPS GPS position. Got it. That, they're taking a water sample. So what they do with the water sample could be anything. You could be taking, you know, measuring phosphorus. You could be measuring bacteria. Probably you could be measuring, yeah, you, there's a whole gamut of things a water sample would give you. But it's ability to get the water from down in the column. So they just intentionally went, took water from a specific depth. Yeah, exactly. Which, you know, measure up. Yeah. Road. Do, do they normally take it from different depths at particular uh, There'll be different depths that they'll be doing it, and then they'll be doing some plankton hose. <laughs> Where's the fishing rod? Where's the fishing rod?